Hey everyone, Lone Wolf Jai here, and uh, well, um, depending on how long this uh, video goes, I'm going to see if I can do another video where I give my thoughts on the Genshin Impact, I'm not Genshin, Honkai Impact 3rd concert that went on earlier today. I'm making this video on, uh, on October 5th, and uh, basically earlier today, I mean really early, like <laughs> they started the stream at 4 o'clock my time. And then um, <clears throat> the actual concert itself started at 4.30. My time, which is Pacific. And I'm like, okay. So I'll, I'll get into that when I get when I make the video. So I'm going to make the video either today or maybe tomorrow. Either way, it's coming. So let's get right back into... Let's do that last, that last part of... Of... Uh, Lost Bell 4, which is just basically a talk. We're just talking. It's a no battle. Okay. William Tell. Sweet. We got his true name. Times may have changed, but he's still one of the most famous archers in history. Maybe we should look for a few apples he can shoot off of your head. As a rule, servants are usually summoned in their prime. So this, so his middle age appearance must be because of because that time in his life when his skills were at their peak. And then there's Asclepius. That must be the servant in the hood. He was one of the Greek hero, one of the Greek heroes who sailed sailed in the Argo. He's known as the father of medicine, and he's still worshipped in some circles today. Interestingly, none of these heroic spirits have any connection to India whatsoever. But now, they've been given the divinity and power of Indian gods. I wonder what effect that, that's had on their, on their abilities. Answer, unknown. I never paid much attention to their abilities. I do not need to. Oh, report. I have reached my limit. Outsider, no. Master of Chaldea. Maybe we will meet again someday. And if we do, let it not be this defective version of me. I hope be that other, pure me. Bye, Dark Nezza. Just because a servant is given divine power, that doesn't necessarily mean that doesn't necessarily mean that they will see it as a good thing. If anything, in it. It was that power that made her see herself as defective. <clears throat> yes, even servants are no exception. Knowing what, what you need, what you don't, what to keep, what to discard. I think everyone has to decide those things for themselves, because no, no two people are exactly alike. It's no one, el it's no one else's place to un unilaterally choose them for you. Not even a god. You had every right to say what you did to that Lokapala. I can more, and more than understand your anger at someone desiring to cut themselves off from this world after they've been going, th going around doing the same to others. All I'm saying is that the ones serving the god have their reasons as well. As that girl just said, it's not right for a single entity, even a god, to make decisions for the entire world. Yes, you're right. Besides, the most important thing is that you and your comrades succeeded at defeating one of the Lokapala. This is cause for celebration. I'll go tell the others. Well, <clears throat> not only did you defeat one of the Lokapala, we even learned the true names of the other two servants. This is the most of, most welcome turn of events, Solaria. It feels like, like, like the Karn furiously blocking our way moved aside, and we finally got to floor it and leave them in the dust. Now we just to keep keep up our momentum all the way to the finish line. Uh, you're not really much good at gauging the mood, are you? We're not exactly celebrating here. No wait, my god power is telling me that there's, telling me what's really going on here. 
you did get his book here and just ignored it. And he's like me are too good at that sort of social stuff. Though I guess you sh you could also call it a pretty minor skill. Would you mind not psychoanalyzing me right where I can hear you? Especially when you're going to be so spot on. As a commander, I really I re I merely offered my assessment of the personal of the present situation. A servant doesn't get to choose who summons them. While this is only a very unfortunate for Neza, it worked out for us. If she hadn't purposely worn herself down, I don't think we could have avoided taking some heavy losses. I agree. It doesn't feel like we won so much as we lost as she left, let us win. Neza was a special case. Since she just happened to have a special kind of Indian divinity, she was given. I don't think we can count on anything similar happening with a local polyp who don't have any ties to India. Agree. Ashvatawan was a single was a single threat. Even though we only try only we were only trying to get to get away. His regenerabilities and his immortality were both on a scale I've I've rarely seen. As for the other servants, we should assume they're at least as powerful as Neza. Would have been if she'd better use of Kubera's power, if not more so. Yeah, the next one we face might not be might not be so easy. Might, might, might not be this easy. Exactly, Master. I'll make sure to remain my, remain on my guard. Still, if nothing else, at least we made a bit of progress. Eliminating one of the divinities under Arjuna's control is a victory, no matter how you look at it. Though, of course, it's still too early to say how much value or significance this prop, this victory pretends. Actually, now that you mention it, I think I do feel a little lighter. That indescribable pressure we felt hindering us in this world. That strange feeling that something is off that's been preventing us from finding our footing. It feels like it's not quite as bad now. Hmm. It seems safe to assume that eliminating one of the local Pala has improved the state of the world somehow. Needless to say, if we're going to defeat Arjuna, we need to reduce his overwhelming power and find a way to draw out more of our own. If eliminating local Pala can achieve both at once, that would truly be killing two birds with one stone. Forget bird of stones. At this point, it looks like we are listed to be our only personal pact of victory, period. So we just have to take a, to make our way down to a little down a little Make our way down a little bit at a time, journey a thousand miles and all that. In other words, our next course of action is to try and take out all the Alokopala. And luckily, we know where we can probably find them. Sure, they may just be very general directions, but it's still better than having no no lead at all. Plus, I bet the tons of vill towns and villages in those areas will know will know something. Sounds good to me. According to Neza. Osvaldo moves around freely on his own. So going after him won't be an option. So the question is, who do we pursue first? William Tell or Asclepius? Hmm, that's a no-brainer. The arch is clearly a higher priority target. Oh? Why is that? Isn't it obvious? We can't have him s sniping Solaria, now can we? She's the cornerstone of our whole operation here, after all. I may be personally blessed by the goddess of fortune, but Solaria there is the one holding the key to, the, to our victory. Therefore, we should take out the archer first to eliminate the risk of Solaria being taken out at a distance and ensure, us, and ensure her safety. I understand how you feel, but I'm not certain the choice is so clear a clear cut. We shouldn't let our king rush, our king rush headlong into danger just because we're wary of their of their rook. No, I I understand. It's a question of who has the greater advantage. The fact is, we currently have no servants to, who excel at mid to long range combat. Everyone in our current lineup is a close, close to mid range fighter. If we were to go after the archer first, we could end up struggling to pin him down, only to have him really throw a wrench in the works by calling in reinforcements. Agreed. That is a distinct possibility. Casters, on the other hand, tend to be excellent mages, but they're certainly not known for their prowess in battle. 
being an excellent mage doesn't automatically make you an excellent warrior after all. No. Most guys would fight by laying cunning traps and collecting information outside of battle to stack the deck in their favor. So in a head to head brawl, they're likely to fall one step behind to an archer, compared to an archer. If we could drag them into a such brawl, we should have a good chance of defeating them. Essentially, our goal would be to reduce the enemy's forces by going after the weaker opponent first. That would be the arch threat looming over us, but that has been no less true all this time. I believe we can minimize, minimize, minimize the risk by taking measures against any attempts at sniping and eliminating the caster as quickly as possible. Then it's settled. We'll go after the caster first. I can't believe it. Well, what can't you believe? As a fellow chubs are demand an explanation. Hey, I'll have you know that I only have all this extra weight out of respect for Ganesha. Anyway, I was just surprised that you were acting like a decent commander for once. You really do know the differences between servant classes, don't you, Gachi? Gachi? Does that mean she doesn't think I'm Carl Gotch, the undisputed god of pro wrestling? Heh, that's rather like a nickname you call it there, young lady. That I appreciate. But to be clear, I've been studying this sort of thing ever since I knew this is going to, ever since I knew I was going to be the next director of Caldea. After all, it would be quite the farce, farce if Caldea's top brass didn't know the first thing about his crucial heroic spirit summoning system. Isn't that right, Carolite? Yes, Director. I know you've been studying this diligently every day since we left Russia. What? No, no. I've I know these things all along. I'm nothing. I'm nothing but a capable commander, after all. Regardless, I know easily just how I know. I, I easily know just as much as a newly minted master. Furthermore. I've also taken another look at Solari's reports. By this point, I can quickly calculate each class's traits, the cost of summoning a, servant, a given servant, and the amount of strain placed on, this, on the nervous system up by the mystic code, which is one hand and a complete and a common pocket calculator. Incidentally, Solari, you'll be getting hungry in about three hours, so make sure you have some rations ready to go. Seem to the rate master burns the cal burns calories. Yes, yes, very impressive. Now, can we get back to back on track? So we'll be going after Asclepius first. And as I said, he's in charge of the cell. But how do but how do we go about finding him? I'm told in the town of South, if his job includes keeping an eye on the people of his, of his in his region, there's a strong chance I'll show up there. In that case, we should be able to met. Ask someone in this village where to find it. Okay, sounds like a plan to me. Good. All right, Solaria, your next mission is to head south, find the castle of Clothius, and defeat him. Oh, and don't worry. You are sure the beautiful Ms. Da Vinci will be holding an extensive lecture on Greek heroes to give you something to listen to on the way. Great. Okay, so that's the end of this uh, chapter. St. Quartz, three arrowheads of malice. Effect of a hero war weakened by the effect of the team of the, uh, what? All right. Shruta Yoga Asclepius, the god of medicine. And this one is gonna have archers, riders, and and uh, berserkers. So who knows what we're gonna have. So that's gonna be the next video. Until next, until then, this is Lil Jazz saying thank you all for watching. Take care of yourselves. Oh, didn't run too late, so I'm making that video.